haunted houses. Is there anything creepier in the world of horror? Well, guess what? We're about to find out in tonight's story. Another brilliant piece of work by one of my favourite authors, Mr. Ryan Brenneman. Now, he's just embarking on a mind-bogglingly, insanely difficult project. He's writing a new story every day for the month of October, and this is one of the collection. I'll leave a link in the description, so please go check out the other stories, because they really are turning out to be fantastic. Well, my dear friends, I think you know what time it is. It's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink. And listen. No, it's not. Angelica sighed, rolling her eyes. It's too, chuckled Felicia. Just ask your boy, Charles. Said he couldn't get three feet past the door before he could hear the moaning. Angelica shook her head as Felicia started circling her, making ghostly noises. Her collar pulled up over the back of her head. With an arched eyebrow, Angelica crossed her arms and stared Felicia down. Shh, knock it off, she ordered. Felicia listened, relaxing, but with a sly chuckle. Oh, come on, she said warmly. Look at it. Angelica turned her head. The Usterling's house fit perfectly beneath the grey, swirling clouds. The black shutters were infested with vines and rot. The once white siding had long lost all of its sheen, infected by moss and grimy black mould. The cracked posts around the front porch gave it almost a twisted, grinning appearance, with two cracked windows serving as the empty, haunting eyes. It looked... Almost like it was alive. Oh, if there was ever a house to be haunted, Angela smirked before moving to walk away. Wait, Felicia called. Girl, look at this thing. I did, Angelica said, giggling if only to amuse her friend. Did you not see me? I mean, really, look. The damn thing's got one of those weird-ass spire-looking things. Gee, it's as old as hell. Don't you want to see what's inside? I know what's inside, Angelica said back. Mold, dust, a lot of unstable floorboards, and loads of cobwebs. Man, I told you, this house is 200 years old. It's actually 172, Angelica interrupted. Felicia's jaw dropped. You looked that up just so you could be right, didn't you? No, Angelica quickly lied. I just happened to find it. You've always got to be right, girl. It's annoying. Not as annoying as this, Angelica said, motioning to Felicia and the Ursterling's house. Come on, Felicia pouted. Don't tell me you're too chicken. Everyone who's, well, anyone, goes into that house. Do they all come out, though? Angelica asked, jokingly. I heard they don't. Besides, I'm not chicken. There's just nothing in there to see. What? You don't want to see a ghost? Angelica let out an inaudible and exasperated sigh through her still-smiling mouth. Ah, there's no such thing as ghost, Felicia. It's not haunted. Felicia crossed her arms, pressing her tongue deep into her cheek. Angelica could see the conniving gears turning inside her head, like Felicia's pleased eyes were made of glass. Hmm. Prove me wrong, then. Angelica chuckled once, and then she also crossed her arms. The two looked like they'd fallen into a stalemate. But Angelica knew she'd already lost. Felicia had played her like a fiddle. You know me too well, she sighed. She uncrossed her arms and groaned. Angelica pushed open the house's rusty gate. Felicia, satisfied, grinned. <laughs> Knew you looked that damn house up, she said cockily. What do you want me to do? Angelica asked. Felicia leaned in, resting one arm on Angelica's right shoulder, 
while pointing up at the house with the other. That window, she said, pointing to the room underneath the spire. See it? The one with the shades still drawn. Get to that bedroom, pull those shades open, give me a nice smile and a thumbs up. Hey, maybe I'll give a wave or two. I'll snap your picture just to prove that ghosts aren't real, of course, and we'll be good. Angelica shook Felicia off her. Why do you get off on this shit? Angelica asked. Felicia just shrugged. Annoyed and only slightly amused, Angelica started walking towards the front door. You're so full of shit, she called back. Felicia, who was too busy texting everyone she knew that oh, Angelica is actually going to go into the hustling place, replied to the accusation with a simple, <laughs> yep, creak. My creak. Angelica stepped onto the ancient porch. She could feel the soggy, forgotten boards bending beneath her weight. Man, I don't want to go to the second story of this thing, she mumbled. It's not going to support my ass. Her hand trembled as she reached for the doorknob. Glancing backwards, she was glad to see that Felicia's face was still buried in her phone where she couldn't see. Taking a deep breath, as her palm met cold, rusted metal, she turned the door. Unfortunately, yet unexpectedly unlocked, the door opened to welcome her inside. Creeping through a short, muggy entry hall, she entered into the heart of the house. The scene before her was as decrepit as she imagined it would be. It might have been totally dark, had it not been for the rotten holes in the ceiling that bled grey daylight into the shambles that someone had once called home. The entryway was surprisingly open. Angelica had expected more broken furniture, more evidence of the lives that used to be, but it seemed to be nothing more than an empty shell. Only a single, broken chandelier had been left behind. It dangled from the ceiling by a thread, covered in layers of dust and filth. A balcony stretched around the entryway. Stairs to the second floor were on Angelica's left. She was actually amazed. There didn't seem to be any cobwebs. Any ghosts? Angelica hollered into the house. She didn't know what she'd expected. An answer? An echo? She got nothing, and that should have settled her. Should have. She felt like the damn thing was breathing. Don't know if I mentioned, Felicia called at her. But you gotta go inside to reach the second floor. Don't know if that helps or not. It is pretty complicated, but I'm hoping it'll at least get you on your way. Angelica slammed the door shut behind her, drowning out Felicia's hyena-like cackling. Alone inside the house, she decided there was nothing to fear. Even so, she moved slowly towards the stairs. She tiptoed up them, cautiously taking each step with a measured precision and delicacy. They creaked and moaned beneath her weight, but they held her. She was okay with the moaning. Huh. Maybe trees have ghosts, she thought. That's why all wood moans when you step on it. She smiled, reaching the top of the stairs. Running her hands through her frizzy hair, she took a moment to breathe. Not that it was a particularly easy task. The dust in the air was thick, and it felt like it was trying to clog Angelica's lungs covering her mouth with the collar of her shirt. Angelica moved along the banister. Gripping it with her hand, she could swear she felt the wood tremble as if it, itself, pulsed with life. She assured herself it was nothing more than the trembling beats of her own panicky heart. The floor still creaked, still groaned under her footfalls. The room she needed was just up ahead. 
up in the shadows. But above the creaking floors, Angelica started to realize something else. There were sounds. Very obvious sounds. The floorboards groaning. Her own labored breathing. But there was something else. A noise she wasn't making. A muffled and labored droning. And it was coming from in front of her. From the bedroom she was supposed to go into. For a moment, there was fear. Fear always came first. Fear needed no thought to exist. No rationality, no understanding. And so first, there was fear. There was a ghost. And then came anger. Could Felicia be tricking her? Could this all have been set up? They were friends. They pranked each other. But this was all new kinds of low. That anger drove Angelica to the closed bedroom door. And then came doubt. And it slowed her. It made her hand hover just above the doorknob. The doubt that the fear had been too easily dismissed. The doubt that she was wrong. The doubt that maybe, just maybe, she was still alone in that house. That no one waited for her on the other side. At least, no one living. Even though she fought it desperately, her hand lowered down onto the doorknob like it was a magnet and her hand had been forged of lead. The end result was inevitable. When her palm finally found its perch, she followed through, if only out of pure adrenaline. She turned the doorknob. Inside, the room was black. No rot let the outside light in from above, and none seemed able to creep inwards from where Angelica stood in the open doorway. All she could see was a short little hall that seemed to lead into the larger bedroom chamber. Beyond it, she noticed the faintest of blood-red outlines where the sun ate along the edge of the blinds, begging to be let in. The room seemed empty. Oh, it could have been easy. A short, ten-step walk, had that been all. <laughs> oh, if only. When she'd opened the door, the moaning had only grown louder. Someone, or something, was inside the room. Taking only one step forward, Angelica took her phone from her pocket before she proceeded. Lighting the flashlight app, she scanned the light across the ground as she continued forward. She saw what she was very quick to hear. Each step she took sounded moist, almost like she was walking across a marsh. Below her, the floor glimmered with liquid that was black and putrid. She could only imagine what it was. Something moulded from the ancient lumber, perhaps. Despite this, the air was incredibly stagnant and dry, and yet suddenly pungent with odours that Angelica could not describe. She hesitated entering the actual room. Wondering if the floor was too unstable, wondering if it was safe. But she couldn't stop. Not now she was so close. Not when she had no idea what was making that awful, growing sound. Oh, the moaning, the tormented groaning, coming from just up ahead. Her feet nearly sticking to the floor in the awful liquid, she trudged forward, entering the main body of the large bedroom. She shone her light around, forgetting about the window, forgetting about her goal for just long enough. Just long enough, perhaps, to see the impossible. There was nothing there. The floor, although wet and decaying, was barren. There was no furniture, no closets for anyone to hide inside. Nothing present to make any kind of moaning. 
In fact, the moaning had seemed to stop once she'd entered the chamber. Angelica began to wonder if it had ever even been real. Giving her entire body a good, cleansing shake, Angelica reached over and pulled the blinds open on the window. Sunlight flooded the room. She stuck her tongue out and flipped the bird as a wildly ecstatic Felicia jumped around and took her picture. You did it. I can't believe it. You crazy bitch. I can't believe you actually did it. Angelica, sticking her tongue out in disgust at how much dust had settled there, pried the window open to shout back. <laughs> no ghosts up here, bitch. You're doing it next. No way, Felicia said. I'm not that dumb. Unlike some people I know. Screw you, Angelica murmured, slamming the window shut. Moving for the door, she looked down at her phone to quickly check her messages. <laughs> Make people think I'm chicken, Angelica asked herself. Make them think I'm wrong? I don't think so. I mean, could you even ima- She stopped mid-sentence. There was a zipping sound behind her, and the sunlight disappeared from the room. Aiming her flashlight at the window, Angelica was shocked to see that the blinds had fallen on their own, once more blocking the window. Before she could even mutter to herself, What the? She heard the moaning once more. Just in time, she turned to see the door slam shut in front of her trapping her inside the room. Frozen, she could only move her eyes, and they wandered. They wandered from the door to the soaking wet floor, and from the floor they moved up. Following the light, they wandered up the side of the wall and across the ceiling. Angelica couldn't breathe. She couldn't scream. There, stuck to the wall, were dozens of decaying, digesting bodies. They were trapped, sucked inside grotesque, pulsating masses of red flesh. Most had been reduced to nothing but grey, petrified bones, with pulsating tendrils linking them to the mounds of encompassing tissue. It was feeding off of them, stripping them bare. Most had been fairly well digested, but some were fresher, some still bled. Particularly one body, stuck right on the wall next to the short entryway. He still had plenty of skin. He still had a fresh face. Claws, or perhaps teeth, protruded from the wall around his body, rippling along his entire height digging into him in slow, coursing intervals. Covering the man's mouth, there was a mask of almost clear, mucus-like tissue, enough to prevent the still-living, still-breathing teenager from doing anything. Well, anything other than moan. And that was what it wanted. That's why the teeth stabbed him over and over again, to get him to moan. Angelica gasped as all the teeth plunged into the teen's flesh, and he let out a final, choked scream of pain. The boy had been bait, and with the door shut, the trap had been sprung. Angelica tried to get back to the window, but it was no use. Her feet had been glued fast to the floor. She tried to call Felicia, but shapes quickly swarmed her from the sides of the wall, surrounding her in a warm, pulsating mass. Angelica had been right. The Usterling place wasn't haunted. But it was worse. Much, much worse. The Usterling's house wasn't haunted. The Ersterling's house was alive, very alive and very hungry. Well, a 
told you that was a good one. It was, wasn't it? Oh, that one creeped the hell out of me, really. You can tell it's a good one if uh, the hair stand on end on my arms while I'm reading it. <laughs> well, that's all from me for one week. Well, of course, I will be back again on Monday. Uh, the Halloween Anthology series will be continuing next Wednesday, so I hope you'll join me for that one as well. But for now, well, go on. Get out there and have some fun. It's the weekend. And if you're working, well, you know what? Listen to the stories. I'll try and cheer you up a bit. Help those hours pass by a bit quicker. But anyway, that's enough for me for an evening. You all have a safe weekend. Sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>